FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's October 17th, 2017. Man, the year is almost gone. Hard to believe. We've seen some really good action in precious metals. Now taking a couple of week breather in all likelihood. But where is it heading? Well, person you're about to hear from has his own opinion and should be taken seriously. Uh, the Gold Newsletter has been around longer than I have almost. And uh, Brian London, you also run the New Orleans Investment Conference, which is coming up in just a couple of short weeks. So, Brian, welcome back to the show. Great to be with you, Kerry. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so, we're looking at precious metals. It, it ran up to 1350, then it pulled back under 1300, then it went over 1300 a little bit, and now yesterday and today it's back under. What do you think is the state of the current precious metals market, Brian? Well, it's been whipsawed back and forth, and, and really, Kerry, over the last couple of years, it's it's had a very close inverse relationship to the dollar and you know the dollar index, and of course that shouldn't be surprising because gold is priced in dollars. So when the dollar rises, the gold price should relatively should lower in relation and, and vice versa. But in fact, over certain periods, the uh, gold and the dollar can break that inverse relationship. That said, over the last 18 to 24 months, it's been very close. And over the last few months, it's been even closer. When the dollar rises, gold falls on the other side of that seesaw um, with very few exceptions. So you really have to look at what's driving the dollar to see what's driving gold. You know, Nobody's going to judge the, the value or trade on the value of the dollar um, in, in light of what gold's doing. The tail doesn't wag the dog. So it really is what what's the, the world, what's the consensus out there among investors around the globe for the U.S. dollar. And for a uh, the last few days, at least, it's been that it's higher because they think the Federal Reserve is going to be able to raise rates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so gold's been a victim of that. I really think, Kerry, that that where gold goes between now and December is anyone's guess. But regardless, whatever the Fed does in its December meeting, I think is going to serve once again as a launching pad for a major gold rally. Yeah. Well, so if Jim Blanchard, the guy who founded the gold newsletter, if he were here mm -hmm. today, what do you think he would what advice would he give you if you were considering, do I get into gold? Do I get into gold stocks? What do you think he would say? He would say, and I know this because Jim was my mentor in the industry and very close friend before he passed away in 1999. And he started, as you said, all of this and really was the, the driving force in getting gold legalized for American citizens back in the uh, early 70s. But Jim would say that every investor needs to have a core holding of physical precious metals, whether gold or silver, and they need to build on on that foundation. They need to have that as not an investment so much, uh, not a speculation for sure, but as insurance against um, the inevitable depreciation uh, or further depreciation of the dollar. And once they have that core holding in precious metals, then they, they can speculate in the area through mining stocks and even junior mining stocks, which are kind of the, uh, uh, the, the really highly leveraged sector. That's, that's kind of a go-go speculative sector that Gold Newsletter focuses a lot on. But, uh, but definitely every investor needs to have some exposure to physical precious metals as insurance, financial insurance to protect their wealth. So insurance and basically insurance against the, the monetary authorities, which is basically the government screwing up and really, really doing something wrong, right? Which they inevitably do. It's there's only granted, there's only 4000 years of human history backing this up. Um, so things might be different this time, but everybody who's ever bet that it's different this time has turned out to be wrong. Uh, the, the U.S. dollar has lost since 1965, for example, with the, the year that they took silver out of our coinage. The U.S. dollar has lost, by the government's own estimation, 88 percent of its purchasing value. Now, there are Roman emperors who were assassinated for less 
severe depreciation of the denarius um, back then. So hi historians will look back upon this period and say, hmm, the dollars was, was destroyed as a currency. Yet we don't look at it that way because it's it's happened in kind of slow motion, you know, like the frog in the in the water that's rapidly uh, increasing in temperature. He doesn't know that it's boiling until he's dead. Um, but we don't appreciate the fact that in our lifetimes, the value of the dollar has already been virtually destroyed. Yeah, that is so true. I mean, going back to the formation of the Federal Reserve, it's almost worth next to nothing, a few cents on the dollar from back then. If it wasn't for the improved living standards throughout the world, technology, etc., if we lived like people 100 years ago lived, we would have seen a humongous decline or declination yeah. of our lifestyles throughout the country. Absolutely. And you can see it around you. You know, that when uh, as a baby boomer, when I was growing up, you know, a family could have a, a family, in my case, of eight children could have a wonderful lifestyle on the basis of, of one uh, income earner in the family. Uh, now, you know, it's it's typical where we're both uh, spouses have to work and we're, we're fighting to buy, you know, to afford the next generation of iPhones and other little gadgets and everything else. And, and email is it's a great productivity uh, enhancer, according to the Federal Reserve, and, and all these gadgets are enhancing our lifestyles and everything else. Well, there's an argument against that. And there are a lot of arguments against the way the Federal Reserve and the Bureau of Labor St Statistics figures things. But the bottom line is that we we have built up debt. When we got off a precious metals anchor for the currency, it enabled government to spend with wild abandon. Um, and that's precisely what happens. And again, history has shown that whenever civilizations, whenever governments outspend their means and create huge debt burdens, then the currency has to be depreciated because the value of those debts has to be devalued, has to be depreciated. It's the time proven way out of the mess is the only way out of the mess outside of a, an outright immediate default. Um, so we're facing that right now in the U.S. We'll never have higher interest rates because we can't afford them because our debt is so large. So we, we will have easy, easy money uh, until and unless the dollar is depreciated to the point where those debts are worth uh, much less. Yeah. And that's really the only that's really the only option that there is. Right. I mean, how else how else can they manage this mess? Well, the they. You, you cannot grow your way out of it at this point, even if you could get to four to five percent growth and growth compounds. And that's its big advantage. But even at four to five percent, you're still going to have uh, you can't get out of this debt burden. You obviously can't uh, raise taxes because then you're going to cut economic growth. You obviously can't cut spending. That's been tried and there's nothing left to to cut politically that's politically viable. So your only option and, and the Federal Reserve knows this and everybody knows this. The only option left is to depreciate the currency. And the only question is the timing and the, the steepness of the slope downward. Mm -hmm. But that's precisely why people need to have gold and silver, because it's the one last, the, the only sure uh, protector of wealth in this kind of environment. Yeah, so true. So true. What are your what's your take, Brian, on Bitcoin? Is this like a real alternative currency <clears throat> or is it a bubble that's going to blow up at some point? Uh, I think it's obviously a bubble. Uh, who knows, though? You know, I, I think that enough people are calling it a bubble that it's not about to burst because there is still some skepticism involved in it. I think the blockchain technology is still, you know, a wondrous wondrous advancement and an important advancement. Um, but the, the beauty supposedly of, of Bitcoin is that it's anonymous, which it eventually will not be, uh, and that it's limited in its issuance. But, you know, you'll have these forks in Bitcoin, you'll have these other cryptocurrencies that can be created and are being created uh, at a whim. So I think what's going to happen and is already happening is that you'll see this blockchain technology attached to physical gold, representations of physical gold holdings. And I think that's going to be the real innovation and that's going to allow uh, people to divorce themselves from government managed currencies yeah. eventually. Eventually. So, but we're going to have to go through a lot of suffering before any of this happens, right? <laughs> 
It'll be interesting for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, so got the conference coming up. How many of these uh, New Orleans investment conferences are we on now? How many uh, have you done? This will this will be our 43rd annual event. God. And it's, you know, you know the history. It's the longest. It's the first uh, investment conference there ever was of any sort uh, focused on retail investors. Uh, it is the uh, the oldest in the industry. It's kind of the standard bearer. The uh, uh, we bring in speakers. You know, one thing Jim Blanchard did for investors and to me is is you know inheriting this event is he he established a uh, a, a reputation for bringing in speakers that you won't see or hear in this in this kind of venue anywhere else. Uh, no other investment conference brings in people like we have. We have, you know, this year we have Tucker Carlson, we have Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Jonah Goldberg, we have Doug Casey, Peter Schiff, Dennis Gartman, Stephen Hayes, Rick Rule. You know, it goes on and on. Um, but the New Orleans conference is also different in that it was established uh, once Jim was able to get gold legalized for American citizens in the early 70s. He decided to launch this event to teach people really how to invest in gold because it was illegal to own outside of jewelry or rare coins back then. Um, so we have always focused on precious metals, mining stock investments as a way of, of uh, capitalizing on these long term secular trends and uh, and also on a free market uh, philosophy. That's kind of a, you know, a, a thread that, that goes through all of our events. And, um, you know, we've had giants of recent history grace our stage and they come back over and over again. It's really something that has to be experienced to, to, for someone to really understand. Um, but that it's coming up, uh, uh, next week, actually, October 25th to 28th. And it's not too late for, uh, investors to register and, and get a big discount from the on-site fees. Hey, well, that's, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting that, uh, something could be going on as long as yours has. And yet it sometimes feels like it's a well-kept secret, but, uh, I was at one of them a year or two back. It's definitely worth the trip. Uh, it's a lot of fun and you do get to meet a lot of people who you would other not otherwise not, uh, not run into. Right. So, yeah. And you, you know, you'll see some of these big names on television and, and, but in this venue, in this kind of exclusive intimate setting, they'll say things they'll never say on television. And, you know, while I can't promise, you know, availability, uh, it's, you know, well-known fact that you can meet all of these guys in the hallways and talk with them, take pictures with them, um, discuss the markets. You know, a number of our speakers, we have breakout sessions where you can go in and ask them your own personal questions one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Um, you, you just don't get that kind of an opportunity anywhere else. Yeah, agreed. Well, I, I really enjoyed it. And like you said, the, you see these people who are on TV, they can only say so much. And then you get them one on one. And all of a sudden, it's a whole different uh, experience. The, so the truth comes out. Yeah, eventually, <laughs> the truth always comes out, but not necessarily in a way that you can digest it or accept it for that matter. And eventually, I think the truth of the economy will come out as well. So if you want to find out more about it or check out your newsletter, the gold newsletter. Where do we go here, Brian? Well, gold newsletter is simple, just goldnewsletter.com. And the New Orleans conference, just as simple, neworleansconference.com. All right. Well, and you be. can find <laughs> All of the information is right there. Couldn't be any easier than that. Hey, questions or comments for myself or Brian, feel free to email us. In fact, I insist you email us at kl at carrylutz.com. The Twitter feed's at Carrie Lutz. The Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Who would have thunk? And uh, hey, while you're at the site, sign up for the newsletter. Uh, I finally learned how to write articles quickly, efficiently, and interestingly. It took me a long time. That's why... It, Brian, when I look at the work you do on the Gold Newsletter, to think this thing's been going on since 1971 and, in my opinion, keeps getting better, my hat's off to you. Thank you so much, Gary. That means a lot. I really appreciate that. All right, Brian. Well, we'll have you on again real soon. Hopefully, I'll be able to break away here from Florida and join you at, at this year's New Orleans, New Orleans Investment Conference. But uh, best wishes, best of luck to you on this one. Hope you can make it, Gary. It's going to be a lot of fun. 
FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. With you, Kerry. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, so we're looking at precious metals. It, it ran up to 1350, then it pulled back under 1300, then it went over 1300 a little bit, and now yesterday and today it's back under. What do you think is the state of the current precious metals market, Brian? Well, it's been whipsawed back and forth, and and really, Carrie, over the last couple of years, it's it's had a very close inverse relationship to the dollar and you know the dollar index, and of course. Course, that shouldn't be surprising because gold is priced in dollars. So when the dollar rises, the gold price should relatively should lower in relation and, and vice versa. But in fact, over certain periods, the uh, gold and the dollar can break that inverse relationship. That said, over the last 18 to 24 months, it's been very close. And over the last few months, it's been even closer. When the dollar rise- Who founded the gold newsletter, if he were here mm-hmm. today, what do you think he would, what advice would he give you if you were considering, do I get into gold? Do I get into gold stocks? What do you think he would say? He would say, and I know this because Jim was my mentor in the industry and very close friend before he passed away in 1999. And he started, as you said, all of this and really was the the driving force in getting gold legalized for American citizens back in the uh, early 70s. But Jim would say that every investor needs to have a core holding of physical precious metals, whether gold or silver, and they need to build on that foundation. They need to have that as not an investment so much, uh, not a speculation for sure, but as insurance against um, the inevitable depreciation uh, or further depreciation of the dollar. And once they have that core holding in precious metals, then they they can speculate in the area through mining stocks and even junior mining stocks, which are kind of... FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today's October 17th, 2017. Man, the year is almost gone. Hard to believe. We've seen some really good action in precious metals. Now taking a couple of week breather in all likelihood. But where is it heading? Well, person you're about to hear from has his own opinion and should be taken seriously. Uh, The Gold Newsletter has been around longer than I have almost. And uh, Brian London, you also run the New Orleans Investment Conference, which is coming up in just a couple of short weeks. So, Brian, welcome back to the show. Great to be in of the, uh, uh, the the really highly leveraged sector. That's that's kind of a go go speculative sector that Gold Newsletter focuses a lot on. But uh, but definitely every investor needs to have some exposure to physical precious metals as insurance, financial insurance to protect their wealth. So insurance and basically insurance against the the monetary authorities, which is basically the government screwing up and really, really doing something wrong, right? Which they inevitably do. It's there's only granted there's only 4000 years of human history backing this up. Um, So things might be different this time, but everybody who's ever bet that it's different this time has turned out to be wrong. Uh, the, the U.S. dollar has lost since 1965, for example, when the, the year that they took silver out of our coinage. The U.S. dollar has lost by the government's own prices. Gold falls on the other side of that seesaw um, with very few exceptions. So you really have to look at what's driving the dollar to see what's driving gold. You know, n- nobody's going to judge the, the value or trade on the value of the dollar um, in, in light of what gold's doing. The tail doesn't wag the dog. So it really is what what's the, the world, what's the consensus out there among investors around the globe for the U.S. dollar. And for a uh, the last few days, at least, it's been that it's higher because they think the Federal Reserve is going to be able to raise rates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so gold's been a victim of that. I really think, Carrie, that that where gold goes between now and December, 
is anyone's guess. But regardless, whatever the Fed does in its December meeting, I think is going to serve once again as a launching pad for a major gold rally. Yeah. Well, so if Jim Blanchard, the guy 